Hey, I just finished filming my last Strictly Dumpling video here in Thailand. Gotta head to the airport in a couple of hours. There's one place though I really want to hit up. The only way I can get there in time. That's a good one. Here I am. First time I was in Thailand, this is one of the first noodles I ever ate. My buddy Mark showed me this place. That's been boiling for 40 years. Every day they replace the meat, but it's the same soup base. I gotta eat it one more time before I leave. Oh, they actually have an English menu this time. This is amazing. The large fry noodles served with sliced beef, stewed beef, and beef balls. These are the noodles. Different cuts of beef. Got some flank, meatballs, stewed beef. Oh, yeah. A little bit of tendon, all over rice noodles. And this soup, this is the one that's been boiling for over 40 years. <laughs> These are the beefiest, fattiest noodle soup you might ever, ever put your lips upon. As soon as your lips touches the soup, it's like you just got lip balm. It's beefy, Ugh, smells of star anise, a little cinnamon, garlic, and after your lips are coated, you just want to keep smacking and licking your own lips because that's going to taste great. Ooh, see the top layer of that broth? That's all oil. Don't let that scare you though, because you got condiments that's gonna help you balance it out. But you're not gonna find something so thick and rich anywhere else. It's only after you've been really boiling that meat for so long that this intense, crazy rich flavor comes out. I need vinegar and I need chilies to offset this crazy fatty soup. So much better. Now, some white pepper, chilies. <sighs> Masterpiece. Once you kind of offset the really oily flavor, what you get is this well-balanced, rich, so, so, so aromatic bowl of thick beef soup with noodles. Mmm, completely tender. Noodles are slippery and chewy. Oh my god. That's the best. The beef that's been stewing in that Mount Mordor of a pot is just simply good. Tender, and every chew oozes out that rich flavor that only an aged soup can bring you. And this is not strange. This is actually a very common method in Asian cooking where a stew, a soup has been just continuously boiling for a number of years. And there are soups like this in China that's been boiling for over a hundred years. There's nothing gross about it. Once you boil something over five minutes, all the bacteria dies anyway. The owner here, um, he's been tasting soup for his whole life. So every day he uh, balances it out, add the new broth, add in the new meat, and the flavor just intensifies. Really nothing like this in the world. Now I'm ready to head home. Bucket list checked. Just got back to the hotel. I'm in the van right now. I'm ready to go to the airport. A couple things I want to mention. First, something else about the beef noodle place. You notice how like they only put in just tiny bits of the 
of the aged beef broth and that's all it took to make that entire soup so fragrant and rich and gelatinous that's like beef concentrated can you imagine taking like an actual spoonful of just that i think your head might just explode also if you're ever in thailand if you want to escape traffic uh the scooters are a great way to go um i personally feel like they're relatively safe the, these guys they i mean they speed around like you're on a roller coaster but they're, they're very good at what they're doing and also um, in places like this, they're so used to seeing scooters. So I feel like the drivers of cars are more aware of their surroundings than, than let's say, in the U.S. But I would not have made it to both of those restaurants this morning without using a scooter. All right, airport, home, just for one night. Anybody go for uh, coconut milk with Dorian? Heading out, tea, Vic. They've been taking me around for the last week. So, this is it. Thanks so much for all your help. They're good guys. Big's gonna start a travel vlog. It's gonna be in Thai though, so, might not be able to understand it. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. No, no, it was so great coming here. Thank you guys for being so hospitable. All right guys, I'll see you later. Bye. gift from Thailand four bags of dry mangoes I told you I love dry mangoes flying Eva airline business class this lounge is nice it's got a little little work area got a little sleeping area too go in there there's a oh there's a massage chair don't mind partaking in some of this Ooh. You know, last time I got a massage in Thailand, I was sore for like the next week. This is going to be a long flight home. You know what? Since moving to Seattle, um, the flights home have been about 11 hours, you know, from Asia to Seattle instead of the typical 15 hours. Oh, it's so nice. That four hours less of travel time, it's incredible. Right, I'm going to just sink into this a bit and uh, we'll see what there is to eat in this lounge. Ooh. Green curry, ah, pad thai. Noodles, dim sum. Pizza, sausages, no way. Heck yes. Fresh coconut. Oh, yes. Mango sticky rice. Go ahead, take two of these. This and a couple coconuts. This lounge is amazing. Ice cream, white almond, yes. Mm. I almost bought this outside. Glad I didn't. One of my favorite things to eat in Thailand. This is probably the best Eva lounge I've ever been in. Gotta eat this too. Dorian ice cream. Ooh, comes with a spoon. About a uh, four out of 10 on the smell -o meter The first bite, it's like jumping into a cold pool for the first time. It always shocks you a little bit. Then it becomes better, you get used to it, and the creaminess takes over. It's definitely more pungent than the last one I had. <clears throat> it's still pretty good. It does come with that side of oniony aroma. This airline, we got a bunch of nooks over here. They're very specific, telling you that when it take off, you can't have anything on the little table. The leg room on this flight is not bad. I feel like the space is is not as wide as uh, the China Airline, which is their main competitor. You have a little 
armrest and this is a really nice space but the China Airlines space I do feel is bigger slightly bigger but it is bigger first thing you do when you get on a plane time to wipe it down ah tiger prawn sweet main course stuffed chicken breast nah Beef filet, egg salt sauce, maybe fried snapper and prawn tamarind sauce. I think this is a thumbs up. Ooh, sticky rice, fresh mangoes. Always happy to have that. Not a bad menu. First course, fried shrimp, two different types of caviar. Cumber and caviar. It's pretty pleasant. A little fish eggs kind of taste like miniature bobas. It's definitely killing the fish population with these last two items. Mm. That one is much better. Got sort of a smoky flavor to it and really crunchy caviar. I don't typically eat caviar, but when I do, I prefer crunchy over soggy and wet. This is the fried fish with Thai rice and it looks like cheese and egg scramble. That was a shrimp. And the batter tastes like mush. The sauce is good. It's like a sweet and sour sauce. Egg and pepper stir fry is not bad, but that breading outside the fish. Might as well just not have it. It's just a soggy mess. Ooh, little chilies in here. Probably like a six out of ten. The rice is all wet and gooey too. Oh, it's not chilies. It's a, it's a gourd. That was the best part of this dish. Fish is hard. Now it's not great. Should have stuck with the steak. I figure like fried fish, how do you mess that up? Probably the best thing to do here is just dip your bread in some of the sauce. Stale bread. Yeah. About six. Five. Five to six out of ten. Mango with sticky rice. Oh, look at that. That sticky rice kind of looks like the choker's face. Right? Best part of the meal. It's like a little cheesecake. It's horrible. Oh, there's nuts in there. It tastes like it's been through the dryer. It's really stale, expired taste to it. Definitely one of my worst airline meals. It's alright though. Be in Taipei soon enough. Beef noodle soup. When you're in Taiwan, you gotta eat beef noodle soup. And this is the only one I could find. So hopefully it's good. Starving. It's about 10 p.m. right now. The people working here, they're, I think they already checked out. Hope this is good. It's pretty tasteless. Just not having the best food there after I left Thailand. Mm. Those are some very well done, chewy, very al dente, but tasteless noodles. Texture is great, just the soup has Zero flavor. This is better than what I had on the plate. I couldn't get into the lounge I went to last time, so otherwise just eat there. Their beef noodle soup is better than this. They didn't even have the pickled vegetables, that would have helped. But it's so late, it's out of everything. I feel like even for me, these past few months, I've been traveling a ton. And it's not over yet. Not by a long shot. There's two major trips coming up. One is gonna happen 
tomorrow. I get home, I stay one night, I'm leaving again the next morning. We'll talk more about that when I get home. I'm gonna enjoy my noodles as much as I can. Just gonna slowly back away from that. Oh, that's freaky. This is the second plane. Pretty much the same. A little color difference. You get slippers this time. Headphones. Oh, that's new. I'm gonna keep it. This is a nice little container. Lip balm, purple foam. This is one of the few airlines that gives you pajamas. They think I'm a large. Let's see if I can get another size. I'm not a large. Let's see what's on the menu. Roast chicken, garlic flavor, cream cheese, sort of bread or durs. Alright, pan fried duck breast. Ooh, that sounds good. Golden fried prawn coated with. Hmm. I think we're going duck breast on this one. That's really new. So it's Thai from noodle soup with steamed chicken. I think I'm gonna go for this. And this is your anytime items. Stir fried noodle with chicken and dry shrimp. Ooh, beef burger. Couple a little hors d'oeuvres. Cream cheese waffle cup. Mm. That was a good bite. Roasted chicken artichoke heart, crunchy, tender, not bad. So this is the Ding Tai Fung noodles with steamed chicken. And also a little bit of cold crab meat on the side. And this, I don't know, green beans, snow peas, and then some sort of like meaty jelly. This looks and smells really promising. Even though it kind of looks pretty plain, it smells really good. The noodles are really soft. Mm. You know what? This is not bad. It 100% needs some, something spicy or sour. The chicken broth is very, very comforting. Noodles are okay. A little too soggy for me. Mm. Crab meat has a nice hint of vinegar. So I'll take a bite of crab. little dishes are meant to uh, pair pretty well with the noodles. Oh, this chicken, best chicken I had on an airplane. It was just incredibly soft. This is probably one of the better noodle soups I've had on an airplane. And dessert, it's a pastry. Ooh, oh, I didn't expect it to be really warm. It's really warm. Warm pastry with sesame paste on the inside. Oh, this should be good. Mm. This is really good. Flaky, crushed, smooth, aromatic sesame paste on the inside. It's piping hot. I love that. This is a very typical Chinese pastry. Probably one of the most unique and delicious desserts. I've never had on the flight. Alright, gotta go to bed. Sooner I sleep, sooner I wake up to burger time. Looks like a good burger. That's pretty tall for a burger served on an Asian airline. Pickles, tomato, sesame bun. Thick looking beef patty. Good burger. Juicy, but it is pretty tender. It's not dry. You can taste the crunch of the little bits of onions and peppers inside the burger. It's got a teensy bitty spicy element to it. The fries are nice. Not bad at all. Breakfast noodles, some taro pork, 
Ooh, rice noodles. Scallions fried garlic on top. Bok choy. This looks really decent. Mm. Much better than before the noodles. Because here you can actually taste the broth because noodles are so thin. Mm. Yummy pork broth. Oh, I like that roasted garlic. This looks really promising. You don't hear this a lot, but that hot sauce is finger licking good. Yeah. Now we're talking. Now this is looking like something I would love. That's awesome. It's like spicy and nummy hot oil. That was transformative. From a regular good bowl of pork noodles to a spicy nummy classic. These are the perfect noodles to use in these soups because they actually absorb all the flavor. This is one of the best bowls of noodle soups I've had on any airline. I mean, granted, most airlines just give instant noodles, but this is really good. I call this my twilight meal. This is literally my breakfast because I just woke up. And it's my dinner because Seattle is like 6 p.m. I love and hate eating two meals at the same time. It's efficient, but I feel like I missed a meal. Oh, it's so good to be back. It's so good to walk outside and not feel the humidity and my clothes sticking to me and needing a shower after about a minute leaving for New York tomorrow at 11 a.m. Let me let me get this one night in. All right, I'm gonna go to bed and uh, we'll talk more about New York when I'm flying to New York. You know, the entire time I, I've been in the Pacific Northwest, it's been some of the driest days of my life. And according to the forecast, it's gonna be raining every single day for the next week. But I'm leaving for another three weeks. Right now, gotta go catch a flight. Ha! Remember uh, a couple of vlogs ago, I forgot my bag when I was on a trip to San Francisco? Kinda did the same thing today, except for I caught myself right before I was about to get into the cab, so. Yay me, making improvements, so, sort of. I'm around the airport right now, but got a little time, so I want to visit this place. My Vietnamese sandwich in Delhi. I don't want to eat at the airport, and by the time I get to New York, it's going to be nighttime. Only in the Seattle area would you walk into a pretty old-fashioned style Vietnamese deli and see kombucha. Spring rolls, buns, green mangoes with shrimp paste. Really yummy, buttery grilled pork. Perfect with the crunchy veggies. That's even better. Red soaked in an amazing broth. Mm. Noodles are chewy too. This is really, really good place. My only meal day. Will be a pretty memorable one. Great little hidden spot. So, it's been a pretty crazy past uh, couple months of traveling. So, Philippines and Singapore and then to Thailand. I can't really film anything for the next three weeks because 
I signed up for a, a pretty big production, travel food show production show. Does that make sense? Travel food show production show? Travel food production show that is being filmed in, uh, in seven cities across the US. Uh, I can't really talk much about it because I'm not supposed to. So for the next three weeks, that's going to be all I'm doing. And then after that, I probably will take a, a week where I'm staying in Seattle and then Right after that, going to Korea, Egypt, I think back to the Philippines. There's a Pakistan trip in there somewhere. It's gonna be a lot of traveling for the next two, three months and kind of push back my plans to move to Japan. It's just, hasn't worked out. This year has just been one thing after another, just one opportunity after another, which I'm really grateful. But also inside of me, I kind of crave some stability. So I'm thinking next year, um, there might be some big changes. I'm not 100% sure, but I do want to focus more on my cooking show and my interview show. I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking a little less going around the world, a little more of the other things I wanted to create. So I don't 100% know what's going to happen, but stay tuned. I, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Thank you all so much for watching this video. See you later.